Welcome people, uh, here to discuss House of the Dragon, episode 2, and I must say I, w I was a bit shocked. I fully enjoyed the episode, but uh, after episode 1, I was expecting... Uh, it seemed like, you know, it was moving ahead a bit quick and we were going to start, you know, getting, getting straight to the, to the chopping heads like, but no, I, 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 I was quite pleasantly surprised, you know, uh, like I say, episode one was missing, uh, quite a lot of character development and um, dialogue and in this episode too we actually got a lot more of that you know we got to spend a bit more time with the king finding out who he is and how he thinks um yeah the inter inter interaction between the uh princess you know his, his name was there and um the scene between her and the queen that went never was I thought you know. That, that that was a good scene. Uh, yeah, and obviously, you know, Damon so far has only been in it sporadically, like, but uh, I loved how you know. He gets them to go to Dragonstone, you know, Otter High Tower, take some of the King's Guard and whatnot, like, and, uh, you know, Damien com comes out to meet him, and he ain't backing down, you know, but then, uh, uh, Rimira, Turns up on a dragon, you know, walks straight up to Damien, you know, has a little chit chat with him, and eventually, you know, he sort of backs down, throws the egg that he's stolen, you know, she's pretty pleased with herself. I think Otto and the and the, and the other guys are quite pleased that they're, they're leaving with the la their, their own lives, like you know. And then you cut to the scene in uh, Dragonstone, where Damien reveals that you know it was all just a big ruse, you know, like like I said. He, he seems like a very complicated character, but very calculating, he knows what he wants. And he's ruthless, and, you know, he's a man of action. Like, and then you have, uh, the, I, I keep forgetting his name. The, I was going to say the guy with the long dreads. Um, I really just quickly watched it, like, and, uh, yeah, uh, some of the names escape me right now, but, yeah, the, the head of the, uh, the Valerians, you know, and, and, and he says, you know, you should marry my daughter, join our house, these Targaryens and Valerians, you know, with the, 
oldies to most powerful, you know. You've got dragons, I've got ships. And, uh, you know, King meets with his daughter, little girl, you know, and he's walking along talking, being nice, you know, he's, he's a nice guy, isn't he? You know, and I kind of knew from episode one without listening to any other YouTubers or fan theory sites or anything like that. I just presumed the interaction between him and Otto Hightower's daughter, I, I could see something was going to happen there and obviously, you know, um, who's the head of the Valerian family anyway, thinks, you know, he's got it in the bag, he's going to marry his daughter. Uh, join their houses and uh, you know, and, and and bring himself one step closer to you know being in that uh, royal circle, and 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 his daughter's going to be sat on the on the throne, and uh, you know give him an heir, and obviously he's going to be. Father to that heir, and uh, have big influence. But instead, you know, he turns with uh, King Viserys, says he, yeah, saying, I have decided to take a new wife, and it's going to be at Alice in Hightower. And, uh, yeah, Mr. Valerian, uh, Mr. You know, head of the Valerian family. This is an outrage. This is disgust. You you know, obviously he's not happy. And and the next thing you see him talking, and you just know the guy he's talking to is, is Damien. And then camera pans. Damien sat there. Yeah, because obviously one's got ships and the other's got dragons. And between them, they're going to be a major force. Um, obviously, Otto Hightower, when he hears the news, you, you can see him crack a bit of a, a smile, like, you know. You can see his daughter, Alice in Hightower, crack quite a big smile. And you can see uh, the king's daughter, not so happy. <laughs> yeah. So I actually enjoyed that they spent time focusing on some of these individual characters. And the Pally Sintrigue. That's what I like most about the original Game of Thrones, the first couple of seasons. I, I, I really like the interaction between the characters and um, what makes them tick. I don't think the characters in this are, are, are nowhere near as good. But, um, you know, you can't keep comparing it to Game of Thrones, and he isn't as good as him, and he isn't as good as him. Based the show on its own merits, and so far, it's it, it's building up to something. There's enough going on now with enough people. We know there's a war coming, and I'm happy bunny anyway. And uh, I'd like to see. Episode 3, obviously we've got to wait a week, but uh, we'll see, you know, there'll be plenty of fan theories and stuff out there, I, I, I'm not really interested in that sort of stuff, and uh, I, I'm just going to be uh, counting the days to see 
to see you when I can watch the next episode. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, good effort. The, the acting's pretty decent. Um, the uh, the the sets look amazing. And I, I think they're doing a pretty good job of the writing so far. Yeah. Yeah. All around happy bunny. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for listening. Hope you all have a good day. And as always, peace.